All right, happy, let's see, I think it's Wednesday, because I think Tuesday you had different homework. Happy Wednesday evening. I am currently, it's Monday night for me, and I'm sitting here at my kitchen counter, Kirby's in the background. I'm hoping to finish this flip video before Justin gets home and interrupts me again, so let's see how quickly I can go. We are gonna, and that would be Jacob yelling upstairs. He likes to get back at me because I interrupt his videos all the time. In any case, we are going to continue to take notes on your direct object and indirect object foldable. This time you're going to be finishing up the indirect side of your notes, so please get those out so that you are ready to go. Just joke break! Okay, so this is my new, new thing I'm trying. I'm going to start with a joke and see if you guys can figure it out. I think these are as bad as the morning jokes, so when you groan at the end, I apologize. Your joke or your riddle today is what word allows you to take away two letters and get one in return? See if you can figure it out. I'll be asking you that tomorrow in class. And no one is allowed to submit it for the morning jokes. Open the top flap of your notes. On the very top of your indirect object side, I want you to write. An indirect object is a word or group of words that tell to whom or what an action is performed. You don't have to write the examples. The example is, Jesse told his little cousins the story. To whom did Jesse tell the story? His little cousins. That would make them the indirect object. Direct object, what did he tell them? The story. You really can't have an indirect object without a direct object, so if you can't find a direct object, don't even worry about an indirect object. All right, so you don't have to take notes on any of this slide. But in order to find the indirect object, there are two questions you must ask. Number one, does the sentence have a direct object? Well, you know how to figure that out from Monday and Tuesday's work. The sentence must have a direct object in order to have an indirect object. And then the second thing you have to figure out is to whom, or to, whom to what, for whom, or for what was the action done? And that answer will give you the indirect object. Now, obviously, I have it broken down into, oh, let me give you the example first. I kicked Sally the soccer ball. First, determine if the sentence has a direct object. Well, step number one. All right, anything that's a step, you need to write down on the uh, second or the bottom half of your notes. So write a number one and write, is there an action verb? Find the action verb. Write that down. Well, yes, in this case there is. Kicked is the action verb. Number two, write number two down. Determine if there is a direct object. Who or what is kicked? Well, in this case, the soccer ball was kicked, so therefore soccer ball is the direct object. Only one more step. You can do this. Oh, I kicked Sally the soccer ball. Step number three, write this down. If there is a direct object, ask to whom or to what was the action done? I kicked Sally the soccer ball. To whom was the soccer ball kicked? The soccer ball was kicked to Sally. Therefore, Sally is the indirect object. So on the bottom half of your indirect object side, you should have three steps. Find the verb. It must be an action verb. Determine if the sentence has a direct object. And ask to whom or what was the action done. If you don't have those steps, please kind of pause, go back a little, make sure you have all three of those steps written down. All right. Something that you have to know, and this should not seem strange to you at all. An indirect object, shockingly, is never, notice I can use never, in a prepositional phrase. Now, this can get tricky because sometimes you want to think that it is because there's a direct object, but it's still not a prep or a, an indirect object if it's in the prepositional phrase. So write down that notice part. Write down an indirect object is never in a prepositional phrase, ever, never, ever. For example, the ship's captain gave orders to the crew. Well, there is a direct, there's an action verb, gave. There's a direct object, orders. What did he give? He gave orders. But, and he did give them to the crew, but to the crew is a prepositional phrase. You should have already put parentheses around that. You should know that there is nothing of any importance in there. So in this case, crew is not an indirect object. However, if you rewrote the sentence and said the, ship, the ship's captain gave the crew orders, now you have an indirect object because you do no longer have a prepositional phrase. In this case, gave is your action verb, orders is your direct object, and who did he give the orders to? The crew. Therefore, the crew now becomes an indirect object. 
don't you love the English language? They can switch stuff on you all the time. So these are what your completed notes should look like. Um, make sure you have them and use them to help you with the practice sentences. You don't have to write them out. You can just think them through. I promise we're writing out plenty of sentences tomorrow night for a grade. All right, so let's see what you can do. Pam left the waiter a tip. What's the action verb? What's the direct object? And what is the indirect object? Did she tip him $5? Now this is a question, so you make sure that you put it into a statement. She did tip him $5. Did tip is your action verb. What did she tip and who did she tip? Number three, we just did this one. The ship's captain gave the crew orders. Find the action verb, find the direct object, find the indirect object. Number four, Glover made us some lasagna. The action verb, verb is made. What did he make? Hmm, that would be the direct object. Who did he make it for? That would be the indirect object. And number five, Felicia threw Dave, Jane, and Paula slow curveballs. Hmm, action verb is through. What did he throw? That's your direct object. To whom did he throw them? This would be a compound indirect object. See if you can find it. And here are all the answers. So hopefully you did that well as you were thinking them through. I think the next slide is the answer to the joke. Wait for it. Wait for it. And here it is. Oh, nope, it's not there. Now here it is. The answer to the joke is alone. If you take away two letters, you get one. Get it? Pretty funny, huh? Okay, stop groaning now, and, and I'll see you tomorrow in class.